ان الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا وجعل فيه النجاه لمن تاب وامن وعمل عملا صالحا ومن اتقى وبالحق انزله وبالحق نزل لا ياتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل ممن خلق الارض والسماوات العلى اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له الحق الملك الحق المبين يخلق ما يشاء ويختار ويتوب على من يشاء ومن تاب واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات الله وملائكته وسلامه ما عليه صلاه 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 وسلاما دائمين الى يوم البعث والنشور والجزاء والحساب وقد فاز من كان النبي قدوه له واماما واسوه حسنه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وعلى اصحابه وازواجه وذريته والتابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين ثم اما بعد all of us are expending all our efforts to be able to make the maximum amount of money we can in dunya all of us are expending our maximum effort to become the best in whatever we do some of us spend day and night physically conditioning themselves so that they can become the best athlete some of us are lining up around the corner just so that we can become the next voice or the next idol some of us are spending our time knocking door to door so that they can earn our votes and then say i am the ruler with all that effort in the end may result to absolutely nothing but conversely what if someone was to spend their effort in every raka of salah possible in the day the faridha the nawafil tahajjud all of it what if someone were to spend every possible day that they can fast meaning fasting half of shaaban the entire ramadan six of shawwal yawm arafa yawm ashura ayyam al bid and yawm ahad and khamis faqad sama dahr like fasting an entire lifetime what about some of us can give sadaqa every extra pen we have is sadaqa as if we're trying to extinguish fire with water what if we performed hajj every year what do we get in the end surprisingly we may end up with nothing subhanallah a conundrum why is that and to understand why that may be the case one of the great of the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him a question a question that indicates that you can get a guarantee to receive your full compensation for all that effort you can get a guarantee to enter jannah brothers and sisters and a guarantee that you will never touch the fire before you enter that jannah how can we achieve that guarantee but more so important what could destroy that guarantee the same thing that will destroy all our efforts for money fame and popularity 
will still destroy also all our efforts in Salah, in Sadaqah, and in Siyam. So that Sahib of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked this question. Ya Rasulullah, akhbirni bi amali yudkhiluni al-jannah wa yuba'iduni anil nar O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inform me of a deed. So Subhanallah, the Sahib of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'll mention his name in the end, he was just asking for one thing that could do it. Bi amalin, just one deed. He didn't say bi a'mal, the deeds. Just give me one thing that will guarantee my entrance and will guarantee my extrication. So the Prophet Sallallahu first response was, not what does that? He said, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ You've asked about something enormous. You're asking for a guarantee to Jannah. One deed that guarantees to Jannah. He says, وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ But you know, it is easy. عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ It is only easy for those whom Allah made it easy for. Which means it is a difficult task, except if Allah makes it easy. What's the one deed? He said to him, تَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكْ بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah and never associate partners with Him. That's plenty of deeds to worship Allah and never associate partners. He says, وَتُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَتُؤْتِي الزَّكَاءِ وَتَصُومُ رَمَضَانِ وَتَحُجُّ الْبَيْتِ You would notice that those are the five pillars of Islam. He says, what will make you enter Jannah and extricate you from Jahannam, you must have lived a life upon the pillars of Islam, which begin with the Shahada, which also accompanies never associating partners with Allah. The answer did not end. That would have been sufficient. Then the Prophet ﷺ, knowing the Sahib of his, that he is a great questioner and he is thirsty for knowledge, he said, Ala aduluka ala abwa bil khair. Should I point you to the doors of khair? If you enter Jannah, there are many levels. But this Sahib of his, he wants him to know how to get to the doors of khair. So, the doors of khair are, he said, Asawmu Jannah. The fasting that's like a shield. He said, وَالصَّدَقَةُ تُطْفِئُ الْخَطِيئَةِ كَمَا يُطْفِئُ الْمَاءُ النَّارِ And he says, the sadaqa that extinguishes fire, that extinguishes the sins like water extinguishes fire. Imagine giving so much that every dollar is not really to help the person you're giving, is to actually extinguish your own sins. So think about it. If you've sinned a lot, by giving a lot of sadaqah, Allah can wipe out all your sins. And then he says, وَصَلَاةُ الرَّجُلِ مِنْ جَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ And the prayer of a person in the dead of night. And then he recited to him from Surah As-Sajdah, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah SWT says, some of us will forsake our beds, our sides forsake the beds. Doing what? Making dua at the time of tahajjud. Khawfa wa tama'a. We're asking Allah in fear, fearing His punishment, but we also ask Him with greed. We want the Jannah, we want the reward. It's part of our human nature. So those are the doors of khayr. Not only that you practice the five pillars of Islam, the basics of Salah, five Salah, that's it, I'm not going to do one rakah extra. Not that you say, I'm going to give my 2.5%, I don't give any sadaqah. Not, oh, I'm going to fast only Ramadan. You have to continually fast. These are the doors of khayr, levels of Jannah. That would seem enough. The Prophet Sallallahu says, أَلَا أُخْبِرُكَ بِرَأْسِ الْأَمْرِ وَعَمُودِهِ وَذِرْوَةِ سَنَامِهِ he says, should I not then inform you about what's the head of all affairs? And what is the pillar? And 
than the apex. Qala, bala ya Rasulullah. Of course, tell me. Tell me more. If I can enter Jannah and I can climb the, the levels of Jannah, how, what is there else in my life? He said, Rasul Amril Islam, dear respected brothers and sisters, the head of all of our affairs in dunya should be Islam. Sometimes we let dunya become the, the greatest concern of us. That's why we make dua. Islam should be your greatest concern, brothers and sisters. Islam in America should be our greatest concern. Islam in our families should be our great concern. He says, وَعَمُودُهُ الصَّلَاةِ There are many people who say, I am Muslim, but they don't pray one rak'ah of salah. They believe in Allah, that Allah exists, Allah is one. But they feel their hearts are clean, so clean they don't have to make salah. The pillar that your Islam sits upon is salah. It is the only regular act of worship. Fasting is actually one month in a year. The required. Zakah is only 2.5% if you meet the nisab. Hajj is only if you can afford it. sabila. The one thing that everyone who believes in Allah can afford is to get up and pray. If you cannot stand, you will sit down and pray. If you can't, you will lie down and pray. If you're in a vegetative state, well, if you cannot move, you're paralyzed from your neck down, you can even pray by blinking. So much so that Allah made the mujahid who's dodging bullets must stop and at least pray to raka. Subhanallah. If salah was not so important, the mujahid would be excused because they're traveling and they're in danger. Allah says, no, you still have to pray even in the battlefield when you could be killed. That's the pillar our Islam sits upon. Hafidhu ala salawati wa salatil wusta. Allah says, Guard your prayers, especially the middle one. And then, وَذِرْوَةُ sanami, The apex of it. ذِرْوَةُ sanami, Meaning, the tip of the hump. If you hold a spear, point it out. He said, Al-Jihad. It's easy to be a believer and not having to strive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the 13 years in Mecca a jihad of untold kind. The Muslims were being beaten, were being disgraced. And Allah told them, Kufu aidiyakum wa aqimu salah. It is easy to fight when you feel you've been wronged. It is easy for people to blow up others when they have nothing to lose. Allah said, That jihad is to hold back yourself. You cannot believe and not struggle. These are the great important matters. What if you did all of that? The answer did not stop. He said, Ala ukhbiruka. Can I inform you then how to acquire all of this, how to control this, how to make sure you don't lose it all? Qala bala ya Nabi Allah. Of course, O oh, Messi, O oh, Prophet of Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Prophet Sallam showed him this. Kuffa alayka hada. Restrain your tongue. Your tongue, this little muscle in your body, it flaps up and down every second of the day, is the one thing that can destroy it all. So, this sahib of the Prophet ﷺ says, He says, Ya Rasulullah, Are we going to be held accountable for what we said? Now, who is this sahib? The Prophet ﷺ says, Thakilatka ummuka ya Mu'adh. Mu'adh ibn Jabal is the one who asked this question. He said, may your mother be bereaved of you. He said, وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسِ فِي النَّارِ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِهِمْ أَوْ عَلَىٰ مَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ He said, what's the one thing that will have people be dragged on their faces or by their noses to Jahannam except what their tongues reap? Think about it, brothers and sisters. When you and I open our book of deeds, Yom al Qiyamah, what do you see in there? You see less deeds. We do less acts of worship a day. You're going to see a lot of things we say. Now, someone might say, I don't say a lot at all. I just text it. That's even a better record. Some will say, I just tweet it. We know who's the tweeter in chief. 
That's even a better record. Because you can dispute what you say, you cannot dispute what you write. The tongue, dear respected brothers and sisters, is the knife that can cut all the good deeds away. SubhanAllah. So, what is it about the tongue that makes it a double-edged sword? Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa naf'ani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru laha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een wa man tabiahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin thumma amma ba'd Dear respected brothers and sisters, the only enemy that is part of us is our tongue. And what makes it so dangerous is because of what it's capable of doing. But what does it do that makes it so dangerous? To understand that, think of one aspect of Allah. Allah says, فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ Exalted is Allah, the King, the truth. Allah is Al-Haqq. What Allah sent down to mankind, He, he called it Al-Haqq. مَا نُزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَهُوَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِ that's the truth. Quran is truth. Allah says in truth, we sent it down and in truth it descended. Falsehood cannot precede or proceed after Quran. Why did Allah create the universe? He says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا سَمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَاعِبِينَ مَا خَلَقْنَاهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ I did not create the universe and everything in it except because of a purpose, because of truth. Truth is what leads to Allah. The opposite of it leads away from Allah. A tongue that is truthful will lead you to Allah. And a tongue that is lying will lead you away from Allah. So Allah says in Surah Zumar, ayah number 32, 33, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَذَبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَذَّبَ بِالصِّدْقِ إِذْ جَاءَهُ لَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوًا لِلْكَافِرِينَ Who is the worst wrongdoer that invents lies upon Allah or denies the truth when it comes to them? The same word that is used for lying is the same word that is used for denial. How is that so? What's the one thing Allah hates the most? Shirk, associating partners. The partners people associate with law are lies made up. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa antu shriku billahi ma lam yunazil bihi sultana. Shirk, idols are lies. They are fabrications. Ibrahim said, A if can alihatan dun Allahi to redo. Subhanallah. Shirk is based on a lie. And the rejection of truth is based on inventing lies to counter the truth. When you see clearly that Allah is the creator, you say, no, he could not have created it. You make up something else. Truth and falsehood. These are the things that can proceed from the tongue. And thus I will conclude with the warning of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عن عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليكم بالصدق فإن الصدق يهدي إلى البر وإن البر يهدي إلى الجنة وما يزال الرجل يصدق ويتحرى الصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا وإياكم والكذب فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجْلُ يَكْذِبُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبُ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا The Prophet ﷺ says, Upon us is the truth, because truth leads to righteousness, and righteousness leads to Jannah. 
how can truth lead to righteousness truth is the basis of your faith that's why Allah says and the one that came with the truth Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those that accept the truth believe in it affirm it they are the righteous ones Allah says, Allah says, Till the end of the ayah, Siddiq leads to bir and taqwa. And bir and taqwa only lead to jannah. That's why Allah says, Innal abrara lafi na'im. Ala al ara'iki yandurun. تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَضْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مَخْتُومٍ خِتَامُهُ مِسْكٍ وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ Compete only for this Jannah. At the same token, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَذِبِ Beware lying. فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ Lying leads to indecency lying leads to wickedness lying leads to lewdness lying leads to fahisha how is that so when a person is used to twisting the truth when a person is used to telling lies they start to use lies to fulfill their desires they become lewd they become you know obscene they become all sorts of bad things shouldn't it worry all of us that a person has been documented to have lied nearly 9,000 times in just two years, and that's because we're paying attention? What about all the 70 years of life? As an example, what about us? No one is documenting our lives except kiram and katibin. We should all be afraid if our leader is the biggest liar, or is he? What about the leaders of the Muslims? Nobody is keeping track because they're all dead who keep track of it. I'm saying, dear respected brothers and sisters, all our efforts can be ruined by the one thing that's attached to us, our tongues, the only thing that Allah will seal up yawm al-qiyamah. Al-yawma nakhtimu ala afwahihim wa tukallimuna aydihim wa tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibu. We ask Allah to discipline our tongues. We ask Allah to give us truthful tongues like Ibrahim asked him, وَجَعَلْنِي لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ فِي الْآخِرِينَ وَجَعَلْنِي مِنْ وَرَثَةِ جَنَّةِ النَّعِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا يَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقطع عليك اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا متعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار الله اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موتى المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له Please train the lines, close the gaps, allow others to be able to enter this musalla. And alhamdulillah, there are two sisters that are present today who would like to accept the truth. So may Allah make their tongues truthful in their shahada. May Allah stamp truth on their hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them live lives of truthfulness. Allahumma amin. Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في أي سورة ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن عليكم لحافظين كراما كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الأبرار لفي نعيم وإن إن الفجار لفي جحيم يصلونها يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يومئذ لله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear respected brothers and sisters, Jazakumullah khairan for your attendance. May Allah bless and reward you. May Allah make us the best of the believers in the United States and make us leaders for the righteous tomorrow. Allahumma ameen. PGMA is inviting all brothers and sisters to an open house 
uh, and this is for volunteer recruitment on Sunday, March 17th, after the whole uh, 1.30 p.m. So please come meet and greet, meet the new um, representatives of yourselves in this message, the Shura Council members, and then actually get to know people and see where you can contribute to make this a better community, inshallah. And the uh, PGMA series for sisters will be ongoing as well. They're doing 40 Hadith and Nawawiyah by uh, Sister Ustada Iman Bad. By the way, the hadith mentioned in our khutbah is hadith number 29 in the collection of Arba'in and Nawawiyah. So pay attention to that when you get that. She will do justice to it better than I have, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so please um, see the schedule on the bulletin board. It'll start next Sunday, March 10th. Uh, Dr. Hijazi is continuing his After Isha um, series, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari hadith on Mondays. And Science of the Day of Judgment <laughs> on Wednesdays and Tafsir of Quran on Fridays at 8 p.m. And the book of uh, Fitan and in Sahih al-Bukhari, take a look at it. It says a lot about the Muslim leaders right now. Subhanallah al The Prophet وسلم, is the truth as well. And the University of Maryland MSA is inviting everyone to their fundraising dinner on Sunday, uh, March 3rd, with Imam Suhaib Webb and Brother, you know, uh, Ta uh, brother uh, Tarif uh, Shreem, so please come and support them as well. Please register for our newsletter, please donate generously, and every dollar you give to this administration, inshallah, will be used to good use. And if they take it and build a casino, you'll still get your reward for masjid. I'm just saying, if you doubt where the money goes, give for the sake of Allah, because Allah knows your heart, not what they do, you'll get your reward. Jazakumullahu khayran, barakallahu feekum, wassalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, we have sisters supposed to take shahada, but I don't want to bring them in the musallah. So I'm going to walk out there and catch them, inshallah. I don't want you brothers to lose your khushu.